Oh. 3D printed, first nine, 3D printed. Nine, Boom, ten, best ten, in ten, the world. Yeah. That's right, but American made. Going. Golf club manufacturing hasn't changed in over 100 years, but Bryson DeChambeau wants to change that. If you don't know, Bryson DeChambeau is a two-time US Open champion and one of the best golfers in the world. He wanted to develop a club that was specifically designed for his swing and how hard he hits the ball. So he reached out to us to make it happen. How do we go from an empty base plate to a finished club that's hollow and has 20,000 thick walls? So I'm gonna show you guys what we came up with to make this process as seamless and easy as possible. So we're printing the clubs on our Lumex Advance 25, and I've never seen anything like it. There's only a handful of them in the world, and it combines metal sintering with a fully functional three-axis milling center. We're using powdered 316 stainless steel to print our parts layer by layer. Because of that, we can create the hollow and super thin walls that Bryson's looking for. Having the mill built in is a game changer on parts like these. This part has over 2,000 layers of printing. That's a lot of heat to put into a part this thin and tall. With the three axis mill built in, I can program upper surface machining to get rid of any deformation that we might start seeing in the higher levels of our printing. That way we can make sure that we have a perfect print every time. For parts that only need a three axis mill, you can finish everything right in this machine. But our part, we need a five axis mill. And that was the first roadblock we ran into. So how do we go from here to our five axis mill when our part doesn't have any flat sides to indicate off from? Because we printed our club with only five thou extra material on all surfaces, we have to be exact when we find our zeros for our five axis operation. We gotta make sure this entire club cleans up and my first thought to solve that problem was the Shunk VROS pallet systems that you guys have seen in so many of our videos. But the issue there was they're just too big. I can't fit enough clubs in the printer and I won't have enough clearance here. So I spoke with Shunk and they pointed me to this miniature version of the VROS system. It's exactly what we need to know precisely where our part is in space and go seamlessly from the printer to the five axis operations. To maximize our space in the printer, Matsura designed a custom fixture that uses the Shunk mini pull studs to locate. That allows me to take the parts off the printer and put them on the five axis while using the same origin point for both. And that guarantees full cleanup on all of the surfaces on the part and the process will stay consistent from part to part. We're running these golf clubs on our Matsura MX-330 five axis mill. This machine was built with automation in mind. It's got a 10 pallet pool system it's gonna work perfectly when we print nine clubs on the Lumex and then we can load them up here and it'll run them lights out without any involvement from us. And in the Matsura automation software, I can attach the program and work offsets to that specific pallet. So as soon as it pulls it in, it's gonna start machining. So the first tool we're using is a Kenna Metal Go Mill. It's a half inch ball end mill and it's gonna do the majority of our finishing on this part. I programmed all of this in SolidCam using their 3D surfacing strategies. It's going to surface the face of our club, most of the back, and most of the hosel. So the next tool is a custom slot milling tool that we're using to put the grooves in the face of our club. We got this tool custom made by AB Tools out of Lincoln, California. I just want to thank them for the quick turnaround because this would have been severely delayed without their help. We're going to tab this part off and for the roughing we're going to use a Harvey 2 quarter inch end mill. It's a five flute tool that's great for roughing and it can even be used for finishing. The last tool in this process 
we're gonna use the Harvey 3 six flute quarter inch end mallet. It's gonna finish up some of the surfacing that our half inch tool couldn't get to. And it's also gonna finish the counter bore on the stem of our golf club. And then we're gonna tab it off. This process only uses four tools. But this machine has a 90 tool changer, so when we're set up and in production, we'll be able to put redundant tooling in there, so if one breaks or it runs out of tool life, it'll automatically switch and continue machining our golf club. Both these machines have been great to work on. If you guys would like more information, we are a Matsura distributor. Check out the link in the description for more information. All right guys, we're finished machining and the part looks great. This project really opened my eyes to how quickly a job like this can get turned around and finished. We were able to machine all of our part except this last 10th out tab. So all that's left to do is break the part off and then do a little deburr and we'll have a finished part. So I took the tab off with our belt sander and then polish the club up on our deburr wheel. And just like that, we're back to where we started. So that's how you get from here to here. So for a part like this, that's a completely organic shape without any flat sides, I can't think of an easier way to go from concept to finished part. So that's the last time I'm ever gonna have to set up this job. Even for different clubs moving forward, I'll just be able to post a new program and hit the green button. And it doesn't just have to be golf clubs. This can apply in the aerospace fields, medical, anything that you can do from additive to subtractive manufacturing, this will work perfectly. So I hope this gave you some ideas that can make your projects easier moving forward. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.